Okay, uh, I was going to do this as a live stream, and then uh, I figured it wasn't enough for a full length live stream, especially when I didn't have it planned ahead of time. So I thought it'd be better as just a video. Basically, I want to have a little bit of a conversation about AI in tabletop role playing games. I think we should have a conversation about it uh, because I do have some certain stances about it. There are still a lot of a lot more people than I thought that are actually torn on the subject. Um, I actually thought it was going to be more one way or the other. But after talking with some people in the community and stuff, I was surprised to find out how many people are I want to say on the fence about it. I just wanted to have a little conversation, see if we can spark some discussion about it. I am willing to have an open mind in certain situations. Let's talk about this. So first, I would like to preface this that I'm not against AI learning. It's a new technology. I think it has great applications, especially in areas of like science and mathematics and things like this. And now you still need a human element because you still need to, to check it and everything. But I think that it could have a lot of benefits like any technology. I also think we need to be a lot more careful with it. So in, in tabletop RPGs, which is what we're going to focus on, I'm not going to focus on AI in general, but for tabletop RPGs, there are two main issues that people seem to be most concerned about, and rightfully so. First of all, there needs to be legislation in place to control what sources AI can learn from. Because right now, it's kind of the Wild West, and a lot of these AIs, whether it's writing, art, etc., are learning from any sources pretty much now there's some legal battles beginning on this this is a new frontier there's some things that are actually beginning we need to have a sit down as society and figure out where the limitations and what it can learn from are because right now especially in things like ai writing and ai art these are taking elements from copyright material. They're taking elements from people's hard work and piecing them together. Now, in certain industries, this was kind of already done. You see concept artists a lot of times, for example, in like movies or whatnot, they'll take a bunch of photos and pictures, stuff they don't even have rights to and patchwork it together as part of their concept art. But it, it, that's just during their working process. That never goes into final anything. That's just them to help conceptualize, which is what maybe AI art could be useful for. That's very different than actually putting it into your final products. There needs to be legislation because the sources that they bring it from, you're getting little bits of copyright material basically into your final sources. Yeah, it may have adjusted and turned that arm into something that it wasn't before, but it still took that hard work it took that skill and it didn't credit who it brought them from. Secondly is we're replacing people in the industry. People are worried that it's going to start replacing artists. Um, it's going to start replacing writers, things like this. This is a very real fear. Okay, I was born in the 80s and during that time you saw a lot of people in manufacturing plants, like like car construction and stuff like that, losing their jobs to robots. And this is something to this day that I still see a lot of people, people that were hoping to retire off of pensions, that had good paying jobs and everything like this. Now, have the robots made cars probably more accessible and easy to produce? Yes, although the greed of the car companies make it not cheaper in the end. But did a lot of people lose their job? Was it a net profit to society? Lots of people lost their jobs to these machines. This is very much a mixed bag. It helps society in one place, but it hurts a bunch of people in another. And in cases like this, where it's taking people that have to have finely honed skills to make products that are actually really good and trying to replace them with half-assed computer learning, we're getting into a bad territory. We're replacing artists, replacing writers with this AI. And we are seeing this in other industries as well. Like this is one of the things they're very concerned about in the movie industry. And one of the many points and why they're doing the strikes over there right now, because AI, they're trying to replace people. The corporate greed, the, the heads of these organizations are trying to take an easy and cheap way out instead of 
worrying about quality, worrying about what's good, and worrying about what can actually benefit us. Worrying about it replacing artists and writers is a real fear that we have for a reason. Because when it comes down to these large corporations, I don't trust them. They say, oh no, we're, in, we're on your side. We're, we would never do that. When we have been proven time and time again, that yes, yes they would. So I think when it comes to something like this, a technology like this, we should probably be handling it a little bit more like the Amish. You're probably wondering what the hell, get up. You're like a big proponent of technology and change in science. Like I'm, I'm, I'm the type of person that's always trying to learn these things, always trying to get into them. And, and I love change. I love advancement in a lot of ways, but there needs to be a level of responsibility with it. The Amish are not against technology, for example. There are a couple of facets to it that I found interesting. Things that I never knew about a lot of the Amish communities. Not all of them, but a lot of them. For instance, a lot of Amish communities have a computer with access to the internet and email. A lot of Amish communities have a cell phone that they can use if they need to call out or text or something like that. Amish are not against technology or advancement. What they are against is adapting that talk technology or advancement too quickly. They want to test it to figure out how it fits into society. So it's not destabilizing to the structure of how things work. So it doesn't detract from the quality of life of humanity just in the name of advancement. And I think that's how we should be dealing with this. I think it, this technology is really neat. And I think there's a lot of really awesome facets to it. And I do hope it keeps advancing, but I think the way we embrace it needs to slow down just a little bit. We need to refine it. We need to think about it. We need to figure out how it can be useful without detracting from the human element, without taking away from aspects of society and becoming harmful. Now, AI as it stands for personal use, I mean, once again, it's a Wild West type situation. I do believe there should be legislation on how it learned, but for the end users using it, if you're just using it for, you know, your home games, you want to make some throwaway tokens you're never going to see again. Although I would like to suggest that there are entire collections of tokens out there for free if you want. But if you're just using it for like personal throwaway use, hey, cool, have at her. You can get some neat shit. Even for homebrew stuff that you're just sharing out there for free. Like, if you go to the Unearthed Arcana subreddit, there's all sorts of people on there, even before AI art was a thing, were just grabbing pieces of art off the internet. They don't have rights to that. It's been going on for years. Whenever you're doing get, getting homebrew stuff like this on the internet, people have been using just other people's art willy-nilly for as long as I can remember. Basically, as long as the internet's been a thing, this has been a thing. Now, I'm not saying that's necessarily right either, but it's not the end of the world. It's not taking anyone's job. It's not like anyone would have been hired for that anyways. It's just some Yahoo on the internet sharing that they made a cool new Lego Mancer subclass for the wizard and they want you to check it out. But when we see things like this in a book published by a large corporation, Yes, some of the baseline may have been done by an artist, but then that artist completes the rest of it with artificial intelligence. There's several troubling issues with this. First of all, the art as a result because of the AI, yeah, sure it was quicker. Maybe he was able to charge less as a result. I'm not sure, but the art's not as good. There's a lot of really screwed up bits to this. Look at the hands, look at the, the way the knuckles go on the on the left hand there. Look at, there's a lot of little errors here and it's very messy. For Wizards of the Coast slash Hasbro to accept something like this or something like this is not good. Now, they claim they didn't know, okay? Well, that's not an excuse in a lot of ways. First of all, you should have quality control for this. You've been in enough hot water. You would think that Wizards of the Coast would be like real down and making sure everything's good lately. Like no more OGL stuff, Hadozi stuff, uh, sending the Pinkertons to people's houses. They're like, okay, yeah, we're looking like the bad guys here. So maybe we should make sure that everything flows smoothly. And I get there's a lot of hands in this, but there should have been quality control 
there should have been a final look at this from like final editors and you can you can tell really quickly and the interesting thing is almost every tabletop rpg company i know of has already taken a stance saying we only have straight art no ai art allowed except wizards they have not decided to implement this until they're they were caught with it basically so they claim oh we had no idea about it someone had to know about it now i've also seen a lot of smaller creators on drive through rpg and dm's guild using ai art which admittedly like the books aren't expensive I, I i talked to a smaller creator recently his book was on for like it was like 6.99 or something like that every piece of art in the book was ai and unmistakably so as well you need to note a couple of things here first of all like i was asked if i would review it now i'm not gonna i'm not gonna call anybody out um i'm hoping that they can fix things up i'm hoping that they can they can rectify the situation but i i was asked if i could review it on my channel and it's for the cypher system and i was like oh this looks really cool but because it was ai i refused to review it on my channel even if the rules sections were good so i need smaller creators to realize that there are other avenues you can do now i've i've done this in the past as as well when ai was first starting um i had i released a thing now it was free so it's not like a charge for it but still i released a thing that had ai art in it because i didn't understand how ai art was being trained and the downfalls was of it was so maybe you don't know and that's that's fine it's you your ignorance is not something i want to use against you if you don't know that's fine if you're willing to work to fix it for my one book that even though it was free even before drive through rpg started saying that they were going to take a stance on it or even saying that it needed to be declared in the description i had already because i had gotten some money on the side from other things and everything i had already pulled it and resubmitted a second version of it with art from Jay Minesco, which he worked with me on very reasonable pricing, and I was very happy with it. Jay, shout out, you're amazing, thank you. <clears throat> but there are also other avenues you can do. You don't have to always get like custom commissioned art for every project. There's a art station marketplace you can go where you can get some really dynamite art for decent prices, even on drive through RPG, like Dean Spencer. He has a lot of art that's excellent for rpg books at a ridiculously cheap price like he's got some like decent like character and monster art and everything for like a couple of bucks he regularly has sales so if you i, I was able to get like a full full print like page p piece of art well a couple pieces of art actually for like 15 percent off cost me i don't know 20, 10 bucks maybe maybe a little bit more i don't remember you can get this stock art for cheap and hey even if you don't want for cheap the art that i'm using the stock art that i'm going to be using for dungeon slug is free royalty free as long as i put the right legal stuff in the legal section because the art just the artist just gave it out on drive through rpg and they're like here's some car cartoonish stock art that would be great for certain types of games and that's what i'm using and it looks amazing and i didn't have to worry about paying for every single piece because uh, when i started dungeon slug i was um really struggling and since then i've gained some more pieces I, I've, I've gotten commissioned for a lot more stuff so I, I i could i know for my next project i'm not only doing a lot of the art myself but i also have some other artists coming in um like dean spencer for example i'm getting some stuff from dean spencer i'm getting some other stuff from people I, i've met on twitter you can work up to it another option of course is do you need the art if it's a small project and you're just like getting some cool rules out there and everything like that the art's neat don't get me wrong the art can be inspiring when you're first trying to see like sell out the book first trying to get people to look at it and things like this and people will look more favorably on it if it has art but it's not needed the vast majority of your book is text and rules and what you write into it if you can't find the right art for free and you can't afford stock art even if it's just like a couple of little few dollar ones if like you're like flat flat broke well do you need the art can you do without it and how much can you do with just really good formatting maybe 
I don't know where I planned to go with this video. I just, I think we need to have these conversations to make some firm lines and firm stances because once again, I'm looking at stuff like this. This is a major fucking corporation, okay? This should have never have happened. Art in our books needs to be done by artists, full stop. I'm not saying I'm against AI learning but it needs to be controlled and we need to handle it a little more carefully. We need to be a little more Amish about this. We're rushing into it. We need to really think about this and how to use this tool properly. We are using it to the point where it may be to the detriment of people and society and we need to be smarter about it. So if you want to use it for your own personal use or like tinker with it for like cool little one-shot things in your home games, awesome. But if you're starting to produce things and you're actually releasing products, whether you're a big company like WotC or a small single creator on DriveThruRPG, you need to be more careful because you need to be using real artists. You can't do this anymore. It has to stop. If you want to argue down in the comments, feel free. I'm, I'm still trying to be open-minded. I, once again, I do see applications for AI in many ways. I'm saying that for projects like this, we should not be using it. And in general, we should be using it more carefully. And I thought we needed to have a conversation. And I would like to hear down below what your thoughts on it are as well. Whether you agree with me, disagree with me, or maybe a little bit of both. I want to hear it because I want to see what people think about this in the community. But I look at so many other creators, individual creators, as well as large companies, ones that I have worked with and know that <clears throat> already took a stance and already said artists for artists, writers, writings for writers. And now we have large other corporations and individual creators not catching up on this. We need to make sure everyone is on the same page. So if you're the type of small creator that has released something on DriveThruRPG or DMs Guild, or io or something anywhere you've used ai art please consider reissuing your product with real art even maybe just making a little bit more plain text spiffing up your format a little bit for the layout that's enough of a ramble for me leave your comments down below i'd love to hear more and if you like what i do like what i say or just want to hang out stuff like that um don't forget to get the thumbs up and the subscribes, all of that stuff. And of course, if you want to throw a couple of bucks for this Canuck, go ahead and my Kofi link is down below as well. Doesn't hurt. Maybe, you know, a couple of bucks. That's another little piece of art for my next book, right? Right? Or Brewski while I'm live streaming. Who knows? <laughs> all right. As always, stay healthy, stay safe, and have a good one, eh?